Today, we're talking about propane generators. Propane doesn't pack as much punch as gasoline, so why consider a generator that can run on propane? How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Uh, today, we're looking at a dual fuel generator. It runs off of propane and gasoline and why that might be an advantage to you. So uh, we're gonna be looking at one in particular. I've had some hands-on experience with this one. Uh, it's the Champion Generator. So let's look at some specs uh, that go along with this generator. To start off, it has a similar size engine to the Honda 3000 inverter generator for about half the price. I think currently it's around 835, 830, uh, eight bucks, somewhere in that ballpark. I'll put a link down in the description. So if you wanted to check out more of the specs and uh, current pricing, uh, you can find that there. But uh, it boasts uh, 3,400 starting watts on gasoline. Uh, it can have a continuous load of 3,100 watts on gasoline. We drop down in our wattage that it can produce. So starting watts uh, on propane is 3,060 watts and continuous is 2,790 continuous running watts. So right off the bat, we can see that propane doesn't produce as much power. Uh, you're not gonna get as high of wattage out of your propane as you do gasoline. And it's a really simple reason why is that there are not as many BTUs in propane as there are gasoline. Uh, so when you look at that, that just means that there's less power in propane than there is in gasoline. So if we were starting our list of pros and cons, uh, we could see right away that propane does not pack as much punch as gasoline. Uh, so that would be the first con. The second one would be that you're probably gonna have to bring out more fuel to provide the power that you're wanting to provide uh, because it doesn't have as much energy in the fuel. And to round out that list of the, the things that I kind of see as cons for running it on propane, is uh, it's not as easy to get the fuel as gasoline. Gasoline, you can take a can and uh, your gas can, and you can go fill that up just about any time of the day. Gas stations are everywhere, so that is extremely simple to do. Uh, compared to if you need to go get propane, you have to go somewhere during business hours that has an attendant that can fill your cylinder uh, so you can get back to, to camping or do that before you go. It's just, it's just an additional step. Now, the flip side of that coin is it's really not that big of a deal for me to have to go get propane. It's just part of the RVing life, whether you do it on the, the weekends for short trips or you're in it full time, uh, we're used to getting propane for our RV. It's not that big of a deal. Now, there's a lot of good things about using propane as your fuel. For, for number one, starting off, it's going to be a lot cleaner. Uh, I don't care how you slice it, when you use a gas can to, to move around gas, uh, it's going to get messy. Compared to a propane bottle, uh, it's very easy contained. I'm never worried about my propane bottle spilling, um, so I don't have to worry about where I'm going to put my gas can, uh, if it's gonna smell, if it's gonna leak, any of that kind of thing. So it's also staying on that same idea of being clean. Uh, it has cleaner emissions. So when you're running on propane, it is cleaner emissions than running off of gasoline. And I actually think that this sounds a little bit quieter. It might be the frequency that changes a little bit, but it doesn't sound as loud to me being on propane than on gasoline for this generator. Another advantage that it has having propane is the age of the fuel. It is extremely easy to store propane. You can leave it in that bottle. When I fired up this generator for the first time on propane, I believe uh, the propane I was using was at least five years old. No problem whatsoever. I didn't have to do anything to the fuel to keep it lasting that long. I just plugged it in, turned it on, and it fired right up. Now with gasoline, you can't do that. It is easy to treat gasoline, but for me, I have to remember to, to do that. And I don't always treat my gasoline or if I fill up the generator, um, I may not always use all that fuel. So then you have to run the generator longer to get the fuel out of there so that you can put treated fuel. It's just one more additional step because it only takes close to like 30 days for it start to uh, to begin that gumming up process and varnishing the inside of your generator. Uh, so if I can avoid that with propane, that is fantastic. 
So the big question that everybody usually asks with a generator is, will it be able to start my AC when it's warm outside and I wanna use it? Uh, because the AC, when it starts up, it has those peak watts that uh, usually is the biggest draw that you're going to have in your RV. It's gonna be the most demand for power. So if you have a 13,500 BTU uh, AC, that's usually gonna take around 2,750 watts to get that thing up and moving. And once it's going, it's usually around uh, like 1,250 watts, somewhere in there uh, for continuous use. So this generator should be able to handle a 13,500 BTU uh, AC unit on the RV. Now we have uh, just one single unit on our RV and it's a 15,000 BTU AC. And so on propane, on paper, it shouldn't run it. Because for the starting watts, you usually need around 3,500 watts to start that kind of an, that size of an AC. And then for running watts on the AC, it drops down to 1,500 continuous watts of use. So once it's going, it's not usually the issue, it's getting it started. So since it shouldn't be able to start it on propane, let's give it a try. Now that the generator's fired up, what we have going here is just about nothing else is uh, running off of AC. I have the converter turned off because uh, I went out there and I was pulling like nine amps and that was coming from uh, what the converter was using and what the uh, fridge was using. So I've turned off just about everything and now we're gonna put this on cool to see how it does. It actually did it. It's a little slow in getting it started, but it actually started it up. Now that it's up and going and it went through that surge, I can probably turn on the fridge and the converter and get the batteries charging. Uh, but yeah, it started it. So after I had uh, run the AC for a little bit and it was kind of going, we were past that startup stage, I started to turn on other things. I turned on the, the fridge, uh, the converter, uh, turned on a space heater, a 1500 watt space heater to see if it could do that. And it was doing all that at the same time. Um, I did not have it on economy mode because this has an economy mode in the generator. Uh, I did not have it on that. So I turned that off so it could just, it could just produce as much as it could and not have to worry about kind of ramping up for that. So, uh, but very surprised that it could run on propane, a 15,000 BTU AC unit. That being said, I think if I were to try and run our AC on just propane on this generator uh, consistently, um, I would want to do an easy start so that it, it's not as it's not difficult for this generator to get it up and going. So uh, easy start is a device that you can put on your AC unit uh, that's going to take that big spike out when it's trying to start it. It's going to be easier on the compressor, the motor, the fan, all those things. It's going to be uh, it causes it to so start softer and not have that big spike in the beginning. So a uh, pretty interesting device. The one drawback is, is it's kind of expensive. I think it's close to around $300, uh, but it is pretty impressive what it does and how you can start your AC and not have such a big spike. But that's for another video. Let's talk about a few of the other things that I liked and didn't necessarily like about this generator. So the things I liked about this generator is obviously super impressed that it started our 15,000 BTU AC on propane. Just amazing. Um, I do think that it's one of the more quieter generators while it's under full load. There's other ones that are quieter when they're uh, not under full load and in eco mode, uh, but under full load, this one does pretty good on sound. It also does pretty good not losing voltage when you're plugging in a lot of things. It doesn't have a big voltage drop. It holds it pretty well. I love that it is RV ready. I don't have to have an adapter that I lock in there and, and plug into. Just one less thing to lose, one less thing to have to plug in. Uh, so I like that it's just made for RVers. And it is super easy to start. You can flip the switch on for the battery, uh, pull out the choke when you're on gas, and fire it right up with the, the push of a button. So uh, very simple in that regards. Of course, it's got all the other things that most generators have. It has the plug for the 30 amp. You have a place for your you know normal house outlet socket. 
uh, for your 120 going on there. You have a place for 12 volts and breakers for all that. So, um, of course, indicator lights, um, all that is great. I thought the changing the oil on it was really simple. Uh, it has this hose that you just pull out and you're able to drain the oil out, fill it up. Uh, so that was extremely simple and easy. Um, I did wish that the, uh, the fuel tank for the uh, gasoline was bigger on top. A couple of things I wanted to add uh, while I was editing this. Uh, the tank size for the gasoline didn't really bother me that much. I do wish that there was uh, like a, a level indicator for how much fuel, uh, how much gasoline you have in there. It'd be nice just to look at it and know how much you have in there. You can take the gas cap off and look inside, but if it's below the filter, um, you don't really know how much is left in there. Um, and if it's above the filter, you're probably getting pretty close to full. So um, that would be nice, but you can get an indication by looking in the top. Um, I did like the handle in the wheels. Uh, it made it moving it around real easy. I expected the wheels to be like that really hard plastic. You know, that, that annoying sound when you're rolling your trash can out to the street. But it wasn't like that at all. They were, uh, they, they have a decent rubber on there. It's not like there's some kind of crazy pneumatic tire that's on there, uh, but it's a, a decent wheel for being able to roll it around. You pull out the handle, uh, it's a piece of cake. I personally didn't have any issues lowering it and raising it into the, the back of the truck, being able to lift it into the back. Um, it just wasn't an issue for me. If you have two people, um, it would be a breeze and a piece of cake. Uh, so just a few things to consider when you're looking for a generator. In a nutshell, um, I'm a big fan of these dual fuel uh, generators. I think it's great being able to run off of propane. I really like that idea. Uh, so I hope this list of pros and cons and seeing what it can do and what you shouldn't do um, helps you out in making a decision if it's right for you. Find the generator that works for your situation and your needs. So if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, uh, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you in the next video. Yeah.